Hello everyone and welcome back to Self Serving Skillet, the show where I give you single serving recipes for those living by themselves or cooking for themselves. Today we're continuing with our coffee series with Spella Cafe. I'm going to make you a little Melita pour over with their Rosalina Espresso. All right, let's start with the pour over, but before we do, let's address our water. You always want to use fresh, cool water when you start to boil or put in your coffee machine. You should enjoy the taste of the water. I don't particularly enjoy the taste of the water here in St. Paul, so I got this zero water filter. And for me, it makes the city water much more refreshing and I drink a lot more water because of it. But if you enjoy the taste of your local tap water, go for it. Now, when you go online and you type in pour over coffee, how do I make a pour over coffee? all these things, you get a lot of numbers. The perfect ratio is one to 25, is one to 18. It, like there's, there's just a lot of sort of math involved. Let's get pretty simple here. The cup that I'm drinking out of, I have figured out that 16 grams of coffee is perfect for this specific cup for me. There might be people who like their coffee a little bit stronger or a little bit weaker than I do, but for me, 16 grams of coffee is the best for this particular cup. So what I'm gonna do is put my grinder right on my scale. I'm gonna tear the weight to zero, and I'm just gonna put 16 grams of beans into the chamber. And a lot of people who've watched the videos so far say, Curtis, why do you use metric? Well, it just makes more sense to me. I am notorious for saying a quarter teaspoon when I mean a quarter cup. I am notorious for saying tablespoon when I mean teaspoon. I'm slightly dyslexic when it comes to things that sound the same, that are also almost the same concept. Saturday and Sunday, June and July, six and seven. I mix those things up all the time. So when I'm working with a base 100 system, there's a lot less chance to miscommunicate what I'm trying to do. That and grams are a smaller unit, so it's easier to be precise for me. If I told you for this cup, I want a little over half an ounce, well, that's a little less specific than I like 16 grams. We have our coffee measured out. We have this on the stove. The only other thing I need to do, which I should have done before, is take this dial in here and make it a little bit of a finer grind. We have here water passing through the grounds and almost immediately making it into our cup, whereas with the French press and the cold press, we had a little bit more time to saturate those grounds and get the flavor out. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn my stove on and I'm gonna start to grind so that you can see this really doesn't take any more time than you're already taking with your coffee. All right, our water is almost done boiling. As you could see, I only spent about half my time grinding my coffee, and this is perfect. Oh, man, man's a genius. Okay, uh, last order of business with a paper filter. No matter what you're doing with it, 
you always want to get it wet before you start to brew your coffee. There are two reasons for that. One, it helps the filter stick to the actual cone. And two, we don't want the first drippings of our coffee, which tend to be the most earthy, the most pungent, the most what we think of as the coffee flavored, to end up just coating our filter. So we're gonna get it wet first. Like I said in the first video, you want your water to be around 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius, and you never want boiling water to go over your coffee grounds. You're gonna burn them. So before I actually make this, why don't you come closer so that we can actually see what some freshly ground coffee grounds will do in the cone. We have our wetted filter. We have our 16 grams of coffee grounds, which is just perfect for this particular cup. Some people will still use the scale. You don't have to. It's just a way to be more precise. So you can see that if we're using the same cup and always filling it to the same level, then we really don't need to measure our water as much as adjust our grounds to taste. And all that is, is getting these grounds ready for the extraction. We're not actually trying to make the coffee right from the get-go. We want all these grounds to get used to being wet, and then comes the first pass. We want from the middle, sort of tight circles until the coffee is sort of swelled. And this game is getting the coffee to breathe in the water and to exhale the water into the cup and then to breathe in the water and exhale the water into the cup. You never want enough water where you just kind of lose control and the grounds are sort of swimming in the pour over cone. It's, a, it's just breathing life into your coffee cup. And that's what that should be. And if you can jiggle that and still see that it has a water content, it's not time for the next one. Now we're going to go from the outside in. And you see all these bubbles that are coming off of the grounds when the hot water touches them? That's bloom. That indicates a very freshly roasted bean. And all it is, is carbon dioxide that's present inside the bean from roasting and it escapes over time. And keeping the bean whole is the best way to retain that because you can keep beans in an airtight container for a while and have them still be good. If you grind them, even the next day, it's not going to do this, at least as much. All right, now we get a little bit more aggressive because these grounds are used to being soaked. So it can probably take a little bit more water. Small circles and that's probably enough. Right, one more time because we're not quite there. And there we go, the Melita pour over. Oh. So in part one of this coffee series, we made the Guatemala Mona Blanca from Spella Cafe in Portland, Oregon. And today I'm doing Spella Cafe's Rosalina Espresso which is a little bit lighter in body than that Guatemala Mona Blanca, but it is still that European medium roast. My tasting notes from that Guatemala Mona Blanca were bittersweet chocolate, black plum, black cherry, and while we still have 
that bittersweet chocolate, we're giving way to sort of a bright tart cherry, something that you would use for a pie. And the plum is gone, but now we have sort of a lemony, apple-y acidity. But because of that European medium roasting style, there are more residual sugars in this coffee. And so it reads more like a hard candy than a strict squirt of lemon. Oh man, this is so good. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the Bialetti Maca Pot.